Hey guys, how's it going? Mark Lozano again here, Christ Center Capital. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about in the basics of investing strategy. This is always a very broad topic. Uh, it's probably been done by a million different people a million different times. But one caveat that we're going to talk about, because Christ Center Capital, we just did a post on the website. You can go check it out, ChristCenterCapital.com, Investing Basics. It's going to give you the rundown of just kind of some golden rules to follow when you start investing for yourself. But one thing that I need to make people aware of, first and foremost, two things really. First and foremost, Christ Center Capital right here. We are not money managers, financial brokers, financial planners, financial advisors, or any of the like. We are not money managers. What we are is a research company. That's essentially what we are. We're researching the moral ethics of especially related to Christian values of investments. That's what we're doing. So when you go to Christ Center Capital, if you subscribe to the newsletter, you subscribe to the website, that's what you're getting, that's what you're paying for. Um, so that's just, we're not here to give you advice for financial gain, though we hope that our advice does do that for you. That's just one caveat here. So when we're talking about our investing basics, it's a little bit different than what the general run-of-the-mill financial advisor is going to talk about when it comes to financial investing basics. All right, so let's t take it over to the website real quick. Behind me, you're going to see the post that we just recently did. And here, I'll make myself small. You guys see. And so investing basics. When we're talking about strategy, we need to first learn a couple terms, right? Just to wrap our heads around it. Uh, especially, and this video is meant for complete and utter, complete and utter beginners, right? So if you're an advanced day trader or something like that, this post, this video is probably not for you, but it's for those people that want to get into just managing their own portfolios. Because here at Christ Center Capital, we're all about managing our own portfolios. Passive investors equal secular investors, right? It is very, very hard to be a quote unquote Christian investor. It is impossible to be a Christian investor if you're a passive investor, especially if you're even if you're just giving money to a BRI firm and everything. I mean, some BRI firms are great. Some are terrible, right? Except when it comes to what they're investing in morally. So you really need to do your due diligence. Homework is key when it comes to being a, a passionate, authentic Christian investor. So this is why we're going to kind of go over some vocabulary terms. We're going to go over our process, and then hopefully you can take something away and be more empowered to be that active Christian investor when we're done here. All right. So we have dollar cost averaging. Most people have heard of this. If you watch financial YouTube channels or you read a blog or you get newsletters, right, you probably know what dollar cost averaging is. It's what the general public has to do. It's what your 401k and your IRAs and your retirement portfolios are essentially doing. You know, you're contributing every month, your employer may be contributing, and maybe you're taking a 10% out of your paycheck or something, and you're put giving it to your, your uh, stock or ETF portfolio. That's dollar cost averaging, because you're not really trying to time the market, you're just overall investing every month or every week or every quarter, whatever the cadence may be, to get the best overall price. Because essentially, when it comes to investing, we're talking about, first off, we're talking about long-term investing in this video and in this post behind me. So when we're talking about long-term investing, that means you're essentially holding for at least five years. C3 and myself, we like to think in uh, terms of 10 years increments, but at least five years and you're holding at least 25 assets. And we're going to talk about that 25 assets just next, that diversification. So there's a lot of people that uh, think they're diversified because they hold, you know, 20, 50 different assets or something, but they're all in the same industry. You know, it does you no good if all, if 40% of your portfolio is in consumer goods or if 60% of your portfolio is in tech companies or, you know, something like that, that means you're, you might have a bunch of different assets, but you're not actually diversified because if one of those go down, there might be a really good reason for all of them to go down. So diversification, you know, we're talking about those 25 different assets at the very minimum. That's a very, that's the minimum number, right? 25 different assets, but those also need to be spread out among different industries and asset classes. All right. 
So you don't want to just have 25 different cryptos or 25 different tech stocks or 25 different ETFs that are all talking about consumer goods. You need to be diversified across the, the, the broad gamut of the market, right? And then long-term investing is kind of what we're already talking about. The long-term investing, again, Price center capital, we like to think in 10-year increments. Some people have the minimum, more minimum number or your more industry standard minimum number is like five. But again, real long-term investing is like you're investing now when you're 25, 30, 35, 40, all the way up until retirement age at 65 plus, 70 plus, whatever it is. That's real long-term investing. That's what most people think about when you, when you say long-term investing. All right, reallocating. It is so important, but can be... A very misused tool so if you have if you're reallocating your investment portfolio on a regular basis and you're doing well you're probably more of an advanced trader and again this post probably isn't for you because reallocating takes a little bit of skill I mean investing they people make investing much more complicated than it is but reallocating does take a little bit of skill and knowing what you're trying to get out of it so if you have a reallocation strategy put into your long-term investment portfolio, that's all good and well, but for most people, it's not needed because when you reallocate, that causes you to look at your investments. And when you look at your investments on a very short-term basis, every week or every month, some people every day, it's tough to stomach the volatility in the short term. And that's why you see a lot of everyday investors always lose because they see something go down, they panic, they sell instead of set it and forget it the set it and forget it is always better historically it always performs better than the constant reallocation of assets because trying to time the market trying to predict the future is a fool's errand that's why you know you have monkeys and goldfish and toddlers and stuff beating jim kramer and other stock pickers constantly you can go look up those videos they're hilarious but you know i think the the one guy what is it graham reeves he just did the the goldfish his goldfish beat the s p 500 you know like nine out of ten times something like that so trying to beat the predict the future or you know beat the market you know consistently is really really a fool's game so that's why we kind of stay away from reallocating but if you're an advanced trader and you understand that like when you're you really want you know 10 percent of your portfolio to be in in x industry and you want five percent of your portfolio to be in y industry and you want to stick really hard to those numbers and you're just reallocating when something goes a little bit up or a little bit down that's great it takes a little bit more time a little bit more effort but it, it could be advantageous in the long run but again, that's for more of an advanced trader, someone who probably has more time on their hands and all that good stuff. Uh, this next concept is so important. And invest in your own knowledge. All right. So, so many people, and a perfect example of this is cryptocurrencies and NFTs. So many people have lost so much money because they invest in the new craze or the new found thing or some industry that they just don't know about. They don't have a general grasp on. And when you invest in something, when you put your financial future into something that you're not really knowledgeable about, that's playing with fire, right? That's why, um, you know, like when we talk about cryptocurrencies on the Christ Center Capital website, because we do, you know, all assets, not just stocks and ETFs, we're doing, uh, you know, of course the bonds, mutual funds, alternative assets, all that good stuff. One thing that we'll talk about cryptocurrencies, but we're really working on vetting what cryptocurrencies are the more established players. Like you're not going to see us talk too much about a lot of altcoins. You're going to see us talk about Bitcoin, Ethereum, maybe Cardano and Solana, but you're not going to see us talk about a lot of other things because it's not our expertise and it's probably not your expertise either because it's you know a very small uh percentage of the human population have an expertise in these things right now given that you know they've only been tradable assets since the the um you know the 2013 2012 you know stuff like that so you're not gonna have a lot of experts in this field so and it, it's shown right over the past couple of years i mean literally billions of dollars have been stolen from people who have invested in nfts and cryptocurrencies because they're just not investing in what they're knowledgeable about. And last time, so the lump sum investing, I got to hit this because the lump sum investing is kind of the other side of the coin to dollar cost averaging. 
lump sum investing is favorable to dollar cost averaging. The reason for that is because historically speaking, the price now is going to be better than the price later. All right. The price now is going to be better than the price later. So if you can get more at the price now, then you're going to be better off because if you miss out on say the 10 best trading days over the past, I'm pulling these numbers out, but they're, I think they're somewhat accurate going off of memory. If you pull out the 10 best trading days out of the past, like 20 years, like you'd lose so much money in the stock market. And that means like if you weren't in the stock market on those 10 days, not that you had to pick the, that day exactly and put a bunch of money in that exact day. No, it's just if you would have invested in 1980, a lump sum of money, never looked at it, never touched it, you would be so much better off than if you uh, dollar cost averaged, you know, a couple hundred bucks every month throughout that time. So that's why the lump sum investing is always favorable to dollar cost averaging. It's just that it's not as practical. Not as many people have that lump sum. You know, when I first started investing, I absolutely did not have any kind of lump sum. I had to do the dollar cost averaging. And, you know, sometimes there's a, you know, you can pick one or the other or a combination of both. And that leads us to the process here. So you can see the process is behind us. I'll make myself uh, small again so you can see a little bit better. But when you're talking about DIY investing or investing uh, for yourself and trying to implement a strategy, these are some very general steps that you can follow. One, you're going to pick your method, dollar cost average, lump sum, or combination of both. You're going to move right on to step two, and that is make a list of the type of assets, industries you have available to you. Now, you can easily go and Google all the different assets, all the different industries that are available to you. But I like people to do this step just off of their own head knowledge because it's going to let you know what you actually have somewhat of a grasp on. And it's going to help you with step number three. Because step number three is find out if any of the assets or industries on your list fall out of your scope of knowledge. And then step four, decide whether or not you want to learn about those and become knowledgeable about them or if you want to just wipe them off, right? And a lot of people, they don't like to do the homework. I encourage you to do the homework because you're probably missing out big time if you say, ah, I don't know about cryptocurrency, I'm not going to invest in it at all. Or ah, I don't know about the, the tech industry or the manufacturing industry or something. I'm not aware of what's going on there. I'm going to wipe it off. You're probably losing money if you do that. But the, the pros and cons of investing into something without doing the homework is, is really bad. So don't do that either. So I'm encouraging people to do homework. I know people despise the, the H word. You, you don't want to do it after you get out of high school and college, but homework is necessary and it's very necessary for, uh, I think me personally, I believe it's very necessary for a moral life and it's very necessary for a uh, Christian investing mindset. And then we're moving right on to step five. So you start putting percentages to the various assets and industries that you've listed out. Now, those assets and industries are the ones that you wrote down and you have an idea of, you know, you're putting them in your own terms, layman terms. And the percentage allocation is, is kind of how you, kind of what you feel, right? So some people are more passionate about consumer goods. Some people are more passionate about, uh, digital currency. Some people are more passionate about just broad ETFs. It's really up to you where these percentages go, but there are general rules to follow. Um, people always say these, these percentages are always different. Some people say, you know, don't let anything ever be more than 2% of your portfolio. Some people say don't let anything be, ever be more than 7% of your portfolio. But you can kind of get the idea that, A, Nothing's really making up 10, 15, 20% of my portfolio in one specific industry or asset. So that's a good rule to follow. If you come up with off the top of your head or you end up doing your research and you come up with 20 industries or 15 industries or you come up with X amount of assets, like just make sure that nothing's too much and make sure that nothing is really like at, you know, the 0.01% or whatever, where you're just like buying fractions of some, you know, $2 share, you know, you don't want to do that either. Uh, really no benefit there. So when you start investing in the assets, you have defined, uh, you've defined, you've defined based on the percentages you allocate in step five. Like that's when you have to pick kind of your trading platform. 
for a lot of people, uh, I get this question so much on what platform do I use or what platform do other people who contribute to Christ Center Capital use? And that's a really tricky question because I guess, uh, or according to the general population, I'm a bit more of an advanced trader, hence I had money to start this and go off on my own and everything like that. Um, I use a bunch of different platforms. I mean, I'm using, uh, I have a Robinhood account, I have an Ameritrade account, I have a Coinbase Pro account, I have so many different accounts. I probably couldn't even recall all of them off the top of my head. But I'm using all of them for different things because I'm doing... I, I'm doing a little bit of, you know, day trading. I'm doing a little bit of um, more, just more complex trading. But for people who are just starting out, I mean, go with something that's commission free. Go with something that's user friendly. Obviously, Robinhood kind of has the, uh, the, their stake in the ground for the most user friendly. I, I do believe they are the most user friendly. Weeble is another great option, though they're, they can be a little bit more complex, a little bit more intimidating in their, their, their display. But it's really up to you. I mean, in today's day and world, in 2022, there are so many different trading platforms that are so user-friendly and are commission-free that it's really tough to go wrong here. But if anybody has questions, send me an email, support at ChristCenterCapital.com. Me or my team will get back to you, and we'll try to help you through that process as best we can. And then, you know... Monitor, monitor, monitor your portfolio on a regular basis. This is step number seven. You know, you've you've allocated it, you've done your homework, you feel confident, you've done your research, but now you got to stick to your you got to stick to your gut here. And what it is is monitor your portfolio. Make sure you're checking up on it. You know, every now and again, but don't look at it every day. Be able to stomach the volatility. Remember, you're investing money that you don't need tomorrow. That's why there's such moral culpability when it comes to investing. Because investing, right, investing is what you do with your luxury. It's not the money you need tomorrow. It's the money you may need during retirement. It's the money you may want to leave to a charity. It's the money you may want to leave to uh, your kids if they hit hard times or something like that. So it's not money that you're going to need tomorrow. So why look at it every single day, right? Because it's going to go up. It's going to go down. And then it's going to go down again, then it's going to go up and it'll drive you crazy if you're not a seasoned veteran day trader and you're just like panicking every time it goes down. No, set it and forget it. Trust the history behind the market. Trust the due diligence that you did and let it go. But it's always nice to monitor because there are, you know, crazy things that happen, wars and pandemics and housing bubbles that, you know, maybe there's some action that could be taken, but, you know, Warren Buffett, best investor of all time, and he's like, you only lose money if you sell, right? So kind of stick to those basics. That's pretty much the gist of what I wanted to cover. Obviously, all this stuff is in the, the post here. You can read it. It's very, very digestible, very quick, a lot shorter than this YouTube video. But um, we made a how C3 can help. You know, we have our mock portfolio. We have our biweekly cur curation process that kind of helps us decipher what assets are morally responsible from a Christian perspective. So that's what C3 does. Uh, that's our bread and butter. You can go check out those. There's links to, um, you know, both our mock portfolio and our curation process in this, in, in this uh, basic strategy post. Uh, we did our own list there. Don't look at that, you know, do it yourself. But if you want to cross-reference or anything, go ahead, hit that up. But like I said before, if there's any questions on investing basics or anything like that, me or my team are always happy to respond and talk to subscribers or people who are just interested in authentic Christian investing. So email us, support at ChristCenterCapital.com. We would love to answer your questions. Uh, give us a day or two to respond sometimes. We're getting a little bit inundated as time moves forward, but that's a good thing. And uh, if you feel called, subscribe. It's only $7 a month to get access to everything that Christ Center Capital does. You can also sign up for our newsletter. That's completely free. And uh, if you help support Christ Center Capital, we can continue to produce more content and continue to do our research on where the morals lie in the investing world. And also you can help us support some amazing charities because if you don't know, 50% of all of Christ Center Capital's net profits go back to some amazing Christian charities that really do some good in the world. 
So with that, I'm going to end this video. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being here. Go check out the website. We'd appreciate it. And God bless.